tell me about the beginning of the Rainbow Chard Collective. Uh, so, yeah, the Rainbow Chard Collective, I think, was born on a probably hot day in the greenhouse of Science Organics. Uh, I was working with uh, Karen O, and uh, we were, I think, picking, probably picking some cherry tomatoes, as usual, and thinking about the fact that the region was kind of populated with a lot of young queer farmer, and it would be amazing to have a group. And I think one third person working with us, uh, I, I believe, like I'm not quite sure now, but came up with that funny name of Rainbow Char, which we thought was hilarious in our case. And I think it was born, I think it was probably on the reload of heat part of the, pro- <laughs> the idea. <laughs> and I think for a while it kind of stayed like that. It was just like one of those crazy ideas you have while you do a, like, you know, a repetitive job on the farm. And, uh, a couple of months after that, we we ended up at a party, and the idea came back, and I think a couple of other people were around, and fully jumped on board, and that was Rainbow Chart, I think, was born with the idea of walking in the first, um, not the first Bright Parade, but our first Bright Parade as Rainbow Chart. How long ago was that? Was that about five years ago? Six yeah. years ago? Yeah, I think it was four or five years ago. Well, why do you think, do you have any ideas about why there were so many queer farmers, young queer farmers, concentrated in that area? I believe that the, it was probably some kind of a kind of a coincidence, partially, that there was so many queer uh, at the same time in the same region. But at the same time, if you look at uh, Victoria itself, which is the biggest city around, I think there is a high proportion of um, queer people around Victoria and on the West Coast. Um, just being a city, because city attract like visibly more queer, and um, and in the regions usually we're not as visible in rural area. So I believe there is a lot of queer in every rural area, but we were just not as visible. And I think because the farmland around Victoria are so close to city, there is this. Um, potential for queer being visible and also being farmers and I think through those network that we um, are part of in the city we realized we met each other and we realized there was many farmers instead of being all insulated in the region so I don't know I don't it will be interesting to do study at one point to see if we were actually exceptional or if we're just visible and we organize do you want to talk about some of the events that the group has done yeah, sure. Um, so what Rainbow Chars have done in the past is I think for at least three to four years we walked in the Pride Parade, which was a bit of a statement about um, Pride Parade being so about beauty and like shiny perfect body on flows and and you know, all the like we are family song singing and everything seems perfect but at the same time being like, Hey, there's queer out here that are kind of dirty and we like it and so it was kind of a statement about being dirty, so we walk in the pride parade as being as dirty as we could and dirty in all sense and meaning that we cover ourselves in mud and spank each other <laughs> with mud and so that was a bit of a statement of bring the the firmy side of queer into the parade, and at the same time, uh, we wanted the queer to be aware, like the, the, our queer community to be aware of um, that there was a farming community out there that they should be supporting. Uh, I think we went through at least one rally that happened in terms of um, farming issue around Victoria, and we also um, gave some workshop for youth. We did a lot of vision, visioning for our own group about who we are and what we are about, which was really interesting and really empowering. But, yeah, and recently we um, put together a calendar, uh, which turned out to be really fun to do. Um, so it's just, you know, plain calendar, which we put a sexy, dirty picture of ourselves on the farm. And uh, we made it a fundraiser, which turned out to be really good. And now, with the money we raise, we are planning to do some events for a young farmer in the, the region. Um, probably bring up like some uh, barbecue events and getting people together. Also, farm tours on the agenda, and maybe even potentially paying for um, to send people to go to some conference around for farming. So basically, the new goal somehow of Rainbow Chart is 
becoming more um, trying to help young farmers gain access to land and, and gain access to farming in itself as a as a business as a venture. <laughs> and why is access to land an issue? Well, access to land in the region we're in here um, around Victoria is, is the main issue, basically. Um, there has been for a year a really huge increase in the awareness around food security and local food movement and organic food. And what we are seeing right now is that there is a lot of young farmer around that has been trained at the apprenticing and everything. And um, we're running into a wall a little bit because land is so expensive on Vancouver Island. And so on the farm farmer wage and on our, our, the income you can potentially make from a farm, farming business, it is impossible to afford a mortgage, except if your partner has a really, really good job <laughs> and they're willing to pay everything. Um, so we're running a little bit of issue right now, like at, at the same time that we are realizing that food security is really important and local food is really important. We cannot have our young farmer and farming community sticking around the farm. So a lot of people end up either moving somewhere else where they can make it happen, either getting another job. So we were kind of running around in a circle chasing your tail right now around like noticing how food security is important and green food is important but not being able to make it happen as a community. So, um, so yeah, Rainbow Show is, is trying at the same time right now to raise the awareness around uh, land access as being the next thing that community in general should approach us um, because I think we went around the block pretty much with the food security topic and now we have to step forward and try to address what should we do with land and what should we do with farmland specifically and how can we stop, um, for example, sprawling because the situation in Victoria is that we are surrounded by the ocean and the small peninsula that's left around us with beautiful farmlands being right now developed and paved. So we have to do something before it's too late. <laughs>